This is Dwolan, and welcome to the Stream Coach Podcast, the show that helps you step up your game as a professional live streamer. And now, here's your host. She got sick riding a kid's roller coaster, Ashley Christ! What's up, guys? It's Ashley Christ, and welcome back to the Stream Coach Podcast. I'm pretty sure this is episode 15 right? I hope that's right. This episode is sponsored by whatsupwasabi.com. So this is a uh, sticker service actually for streamers and it's really cool. It's a really neat idea, very new on the scene. It is w-h-a-z-z-u-p-w-a-s-a-b-i.com. Com. So you can go there and you can actually order stickers of your emotes and they come in three different sizes. There's a one inch size, a two inch size, and a four inch size. And I actually recently was sent some of these and they are so cool. I really want to start using them for like giveaways, maybe doing giveaways for uh, the first people to show up and, and comment on a YouTube video or something. I don't know, but the possibilities are endless. And what I think is so neat about stickers like this and especially since they're stickers of your emotes is that getting that specific sticker in front of somebody just kind of makes your entire stream and your entire community more real to them so if you're doing giveaways of your stickers and somebody receives one in the mail they're like whoa this community this place i spent all this time and i won this giveaway and i got this thing like this is an actual representation of that and i think that that is so cool. We actually talk about merchandise and the importance of merchandise for growing your community in this episode. So this episode is actually going to be about stream teams, okay? And stream teams are obviously extremely popular. There are a ton of them. There are some that have thousands of people. There are some that are very small and focus on just having great relationships between a handful of people. And there's no really right or wrong way to, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say there's not a wrong way to have a stream team because there definitely is. There are definitely people that, that do it wrong. Um, there are definitely, you know, dramatic situations that have happened that have been very public where people just have not been um, great leaders or just drama that's gone down. Obviously, we're not really going to talk about that right now, but uh, there's definitely a wrong w- way to run them. And so in this episode, we're going to talk about running a stream team successfully and what it takes to be a good member of a stream team and how that can help you grow your own community as well. I think a lot of people kind of flock towards stream teams because they know that networking Ugh, I hate that word. If you've seen that YouTube video, I hate the word networking. It's just it's so cringy to me. But networking, quote unquote, is such a big part about building a brand on online, right? So it's it helps you get your content in front of more people. It helps you collab with people. It also helps you just learn more about the content space in general, which is so important for somebody that is trying to build a community and either take this really seriously or make a career out of it. And I, yeah, definitely everyone knows like the value of networking and that's why stream teams are super popular is because they seem like a really easy way for a lot of people to get together and to network gross with each other. <laughs> um, I think a problem with that though is that a lot of people flock to these stream teams and they don't do any research, right? They don't look into what this team is all about, who is on the team, how are they expected to interact. They just see a team being mentioned a lot and they're like, oh, I want to be part of that because I've seen it so much. And that could work against us in a lot of cases because you might be aligning yourself in with other people that don't have the same morals and values as you or with uh, communities that just aren't there to genuinely help you and to genuinely provide a space where you are able to kind of express yourself freely, right? And to meet other people that have the same interests and to meet a supportive group of like-minded individuals that all support each other and love each other and are just super ecstatic for everyone's successes. So they can be a really great experience or they can 
really be awful. You really want to make sure that you do your research whenever it comes to a stream team. And whenever you do eventually find one that you enjoy and you jump onto it, and then you you just get into it for the promotion so you can use a hashtag and get retweeted like that is that is not the reason that we join these teams i mean you can definitely do that but what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it right and our guest this week actually talks about that a bit in this interview the time that you spend getting to know your teammates and giving them value and friendship and and love is what you're going to get back from them as well. So if you're just joining just to get a retweet on your going live tweet, or if you're just trying to get your stream in front of more people instead of actually being a real person and developing real relationships. And I feel like I talk about this all the time. I hope I'm not like talking your guys' ears off about having real relationships, but it really is important. And it's such a big part of being a creator. Like if you are going to be creating in this space consistently, you have to be your authentic self. You have to go and try to meet people and you have to develop relationships otherwise you're just you're not going to get anywhere like there's there you're not an island right everybody knows each other in this community so we all need to to go out and and form these relationships and and support and love each other so our guest this week is none other than the manager of team kitty okay team kitty is an amazing amazing stream team i specifically chose this person because I feel like they are just doing it really, really well. Like they're not um, forcing people to retweet. They're not doing any of these shady things that a lot of other stream teams have been doing. So I'm really excited for you guys to hear this. She brings up a lot of really awesome points. Um, For those of you that don't know, Team Kitty is a stream team that was founded by Kitty Plays in 2014. There's about 100 women members and when you go to the discord it's honestly like being in a slumber party in the 90s like it is the coolest thing everyone is so supportive and happy and you can just tell that everybody there is kind of the same kind of person they have the same values they have the same um support for each other and it's just a really great place to be and i think they kind of nailed stream teams really well they did a really really great job on it so uh yeah that's it make sure that you guys stick around towards the end i have uh, a little little bit of something something i don't have any i don't have anything for you i don't know why i was saying that (laughs) all right (laughs) i will see you guys after the interview though enjoy meeting libby the manager of team kitty Welcome to the Stream Coach Podcast. I don't even know what episode this is, but our guest today is Libby. She is a streamer and competitive team robotics coach. She's also the manager of Team Kitty TV, which is just an incredibly engaged stream team that has over 100 women on it, was founded by Kitty Plays in 2014, and it's honestly like being in a big sleepover. So today we're going to talk about how you can have an engaged stream team, how you can grow that stream team, um, and just different ways to keep the community close as it grows and kind of foster that environment of friendship over it just being a place where people go for like follow for follow, right? So welcome Libby. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited um, to to be here, uh, and I'm I'm really happy to have both, to have you on Team Kitty as a part of our wonderful team, uh, and to be able to talk a little bit about what we do. Yay! So let's go ahead and start off with like, how did you get involved with Team Kitty? Sure. Uh, so I actually started. I mean, I have been streaming myself for just over two years now. Um, a viewer of Twitch for a long time. Um, you know would look into like finding games that I wanted to play or whatever. Um, And then one day I stumbled across this Kitty Plays channel. I didn't know what she was about or who she was. Um, At first I was super jealous of like how incredible she really is. Um, And I was just like a fan of her content, like a casual fan. And at one point uh, when I was done with graduate school, I was freelancing actually and a lot of stuff that I was doing uh, my my background is actually in in marketing and engineering um it's a little bit of a weird cross but that's what it is um and I was doing some freelancing 
mostly with media, like I would do web design or graphic design or something. And I was just casually watching one of Kristen Kitty Kitty plays Kristen's vlogs one day, and she like was flopping down on the couch and just like, oh, this is so hard. I need an editor. And I was like, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen if I emailed her and was like, yo, I'm a freelancer and I'm a Twitch person and like, I like your content. Do you want me to edit for you? And I was like, she probably gets a million emails a day, like whatever. I'll just send this email and put it out to the universe and see what happens. So I did that and I figured I was never going to get a response. And she wrote me back like a day later and was like, hell yeah, like, let's see what you can do. So I started editing her videos and then over time I've sort of expanded to working with um, not only her, I, I don't really do as much of her YouTube videos anymore, but other media content for Kristen um, as well as one day we were just talking about what she does um, with her stream and with her team. And I said, I was like, what's this team kitty thing about that you have on your profile? You know, I've noticed that you have a Twitch team, but there's nothing really doing with it. Like nothing's happening. And she basically said, uh, I don't really have the time to run and to manage a community. If you would like to do something with that, have at it. Um, and so that was in September of 2016, I think. I started working with her um, just about two years ago in just about this time of year, actually, in 2016. Uh, so like February, March-ish 2016. And um, I started working with Team Kitty in that se same September. Um, and now what I do is, I mean, Twitch and, and Team Kitty are not my full-time job, but uh, as far as it's, it's more of like a a fun, occasional money-making hobby. Um, but I, I manage Team Kitty, uh, I have my own stream channel, and then I also do some stuff with, with the Kitty Plays uh, media stuff, but I don't do her video editing anymore. I've kind of moved on past that. Um, managing Team Kitty now involves um, recruiting new people to the team, if uh, you know we are taking applications on, which we typically have things, our inbox kind of open, uh, maintaining the community of the team, uh, of Team Kitty, whether that is broadcaster to broadcaster, just generally maintaining our social media, um, as well as um, working on things that anyone on Team Kitty, uh, from the smallest caster to the biggest caster, can, uh, finding opportunities that they can take part in, whether it's with different brands and products, or it's a new game to play, just something that would help their stream grow or help their portfolio grow. So part of uh, managing Team Kitty involves kind of searching out those opportunities and bringing them to the girls on the team. Um, and I know that uh, you kind of mentioned it, but Team Kitty is just for women. Um, team, not that we you know don't love male streamers, but Team Kitty is, uh, our goal is to create a positive, inclusive, warm, wonderful, warm fuzzies, happy space uh, for women on Twitch um, and to really empower women to go into content creation or continue content creation um, based on whatever it is they want to do. And my job is to help them do that thing uh, and to maybe help make it a part of their, uh, their not necessarily full time, but a, a good part of their actual income. It's something they can truly survive off of. So that's the goal and that's what I do. Yeah, so as you guys can tell, Libby has her hands in a lot of different pots just all over the content creation world and is a very busy person. But likewise, like Team Kitty is just an extremely positive environment and awesome place to be. And Libby, you mentioned that Kristen had the team, but she wasn't actually running it. And so she allowed you to kind of like step up to the plate and to turn it into what it is today. So how important do you think it actually is for the partner that owns the stream team to be the person to run it? Um, so I would say that it is important that the person who is running the team, or not necessarily that is running the team, sorry, the, the partner that is the face of the team, we'll call it the figurehead, the face, whatever you want to call it, um, that that partner is visible, is a part of the team. Uh, you wouldn't be a team if that person weren't on it, right? Um, but I think sometimes I see other teams and, and I feel like I need to do this disclaimer. I'm sure you do as well, but like no shade to what any other team is doing. Every other team is doing exactly what they need to fulfill their goals. And I'm not trying to say that there's a right or a wrong answer, but in our case specifically, um, yeah, would it be great if Kristen could spend a million hours a day in our chat hanging out with us uh, exactly like anybody else does? Yeah, sure. She's there every day. She's hanging out. She's chit chatting with us. Um, but I think the ins and outs of running Team Kitty specifically um, is essentially its own part-time job. And when you see teams with um, 
a partner at the helm, which is how you create a team on Twitch. Um, when you see teams with a partner at the helm, that partner probably has their hands full with being a Twitch partner and, and running their own stream and doing their thing. Um, I think it's totally okay to both admit that you need help to create the best experience for your team and to actually recruit that help. And I would not be able to continue my sentence. My my inner conscience is hitting me across the face. Um, I can't even, like if we're going meta here, I cannot even do what I do without our community manager, Heather Hartz. Um, so if <laughs> I, I have to shout her out too, because on that whole laundry list of things that I do, I am not alone in that. That's new as of a couple of months ago, but um, I think it's totally okay for that partner to say, I have a vision for a team and I'm gonna put somebody in place to execute that vision because I know I don't have the time to create that myself. So for example, in our case, one of Kristen's really big goals is that Team Kitty serves a support network, not only just like rah, rah, you did it, I'm so proud of you, Yas girl, but that we're actually creating opportunities for broadcasters that could either directly you know, sponsor them, give them some sort of money or income or lead them to a further sponsorship. Um, because there's so many people who are amazing content creators where it's not their full-time gig and that's what they want more than anything, right? I wanna be a partner, I wanna be this, I wanna be that, I want this to be my whole gig. And there's just like something missing or they need a door to open. And so Kristen's vision for Team Kitty is that we, we do that door opening if we have to um, or if we can. And so it's okay to say, hey, like in order to do that, that's my vision for the team, but I, I, Kitty, don't have the time to personally make all these phone calls and do all of these things. So I'm gonna have some help. And Kristen and I basically sat down over what her vision for the team was uh, and is, and, and you know, as it grows, we actually just talked today about a couple of different things. So that's constantly evolving and she's always here checking in with us and being a part of it. But um, I think as long as that partner is visible in the team and a part of the team, it's okay to have somebody else execute your vision. And I don't feel any differently about what I'm doing on the team because I'm not the partner in charge. I actually don't know if I were in that I would wanna run my own team. I'd just be like, somebody else do it. Um, maybe that's maybe that's coming from this from the somebody else at this point in time. But I think there's so much that goes into engaging and running a community like ours. So being able to say, I can't do this alone, what on any level of content creation, I think is really important. And again, I would be very intensely remiss if I did not also mention Heather Hartz, our community manager, who is in addition to me doing a lot of work on Team Kitty, she does a ton as well. Um, she's been doing an absolutely stellar job uh, with, for example, like our social media engagement as a team. Um, so even, even it, you know, we go down one further level on our team. And I think that's a part of why we've been able to be an engaging community the way that we are. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel like it kind of, it kind of mirrors just online entrepreneurship in general because at a certain point, like you, you reach your maximum, right? Like there are only so many hours in the day. There's, there's only a, a specific amount of time that each person has, whether they have a million followers or two. And so you eventually reach like your critical mass and you're like, okay, now in order for me to grow or to do anything else, I have to have somebody else come on and to help me out. And I feel like there's a lot of, of opportunity there for people to um, really like step up their game by growing a team on Twitch. And even if you're maybe a little bit smaller, if you're starting to get overwhelmed, like looking for people that are invested in you and believe in your message and your voice and your potential, and just like teaming up with them and creating something even bigger than you would be able to on your own. And I don't think that there's any problem with being able to do that. So I'd love to see that kind of idea change between people that, you know, that are the heads of these stream teams and, and making them feel like they aren't pressured into <laughs> into having to run it on their own. So I think totally. that's really cool. I mean, I think even, I mean, so the first thing you said about kind of saying in order to grow, I need to make X step and that's gonna take more of my time. That's actually something even in my pre-Twitch world of freelancing, like you, 
is a part of that process, right? It's like, how many casters between the two of us do we know that it's like, man, I'd love to go full time. I know if I could yeah. go full time that I could make it. But if you can't, right? Like if you can't mm -hmm. make that full time leap, whether it's because of money or time or whatever, then you're not going to reach that. So there's this almost, it's the, yes. there was a web comic a million years ago that still makes me laugh, but it's like the cheese nacho paradox where it's like, we don't have enough oh, yeah. chips to make nachos. <laughs> and then you buy t enough more chips and then you don't have enough cheese, right? Yeah. Like I don't know how we're going back to food like we did in the pre-show. Of course, but, of but, course. Um, <laughs> it's, it's this idea of like, in order to jump off into this next point, I need something else or I need to fall for a little bit and let that safety net exist. And I actually think to your point about a partner being at the head of a stream team that isn't potentially utilizing somebody else to help it grow, depending on the goals of that individual org, you might actually be doing a disservice to the members of that team, right? If you're right. just if you're just giving someone a badge to slap on their profile, um, then I don't, uh, is that what your team is aimed at, right? Um, so mm -hmm. I, I, I think there's a, an interesting point there where you said, you know, bringing people who are in for the message or in for the goal in my in my life with competition robotics my thing in robotics as well is being a female mentor being someone who can show young women because my the robotics competition stuff i do is high school students that yes there is someone who can be in this position there is someone that you can look up to that is like you right mm -hmm. yeah, so i i think there's actually something really interesting in a team's goal, right? If your team's goal is just for something to slap on somebody's profile, great, awesome, enjoy that badge. But if your goal is to grow people and you can't put the time in to help them grow, it's, I think, not welcoming in that help, not finding somebody who aligns with that vision can be so very, like, could potentially be doing a disservice to people you're trying to serve in, in that market case. You know, I think it's, is obviously very different. Any partner that wants to start a stream team, anybody who wants to be on a stream team needs to find a team or make a team that has the, their own goals in mind. But I think in the case of a team where you're trying to grow and, you know, promote people and, and really become a really engaged network, I think mm -hmm. if, if I didn't exist, Team Kitty would still be just a badge on people's profiles. And I'm not trying to like puff myself up here like I there are days when I'm like I don't want to do anything to do with Team Kitty today but like <laughs> I, I'm not trying to say I'm like God's gift to Twitch teams or anything but like if I didn't put time I mean, into but you Team kind Kitty of that if I didn't put time into Team Kitty nobody would or I'm sure someone eventually would come along but we wouldn't be we are right we wouldn't be where we are right now on this timeline if Kristen had said, I don't really want anybody to help me. I feel like I need to do this all myself. Mm -hmm. That would have hurt the people who are on the team. So anyway, slightly tangent. I'm sure you were getting to a point, but I just wanted to touch on that before you moved on. I apologize. No, no. I love that because I, I agree. And I definitely think there can be a mindset shift that would be so beneficial for everybody involved in the Twitch community is just like create a team and go out there and own it. Like, just take over the world with the team that you have. So I love that. Um, I do want to go back to like something I mentioned earlier, which was that like being in the Team Kitty Discord, it feels like a giant slumber party in the 90s. Like it feels like we're all just, <laughs> we put blankets down on the floor. We're all like doing each other's hair and we are like watching um, like a Mary-Kate and Ashley video and eating popcorn with like M&Ms on the bottom. <laughs> like, <laughs> so why is the, why is the community like that? Why is it so engaged and active? Um, so I, that first of all, that warms my heart. That's like how you feel about the team because that's my goal, right? Is yeah. that's from a from a team management perspective, we can talk about the business of stream teams and the business of sponsorship, yada yada yada. None of that shit matters. Oh, sorry, I need to. Okay. Oh, no, girl. Of, Do none, it, none, girl. Of that, none of that. Shit Get on matters. that soapbox. If you if you don't have people who love what you're doing, like mm -hmm. if Team Kitty was. Again, I'm, I, I really am not trying to throw shade, but like if Team Kitty was just like, yay, you're on Team Kitty. Now we're going to follow each other. Cool. And then you like never followed up with it, right? That wouldn't actually benefit you. So something that I try to do and that I love um, 
that our team does and follows up on because I don't think what even if I tried this with people who weren't into it they'd be like oh this is so stupid I'm leaving the team um but we're not just about stream tips we're not just about graphics or YouTube editing or stats or whatever our part of our discord is set up there's literally a segment that's like show me like pictures of your pets i'm literally opening discord right now show me memes <laughs> like there's like so much random stuff like we talk about makeup we talk about our dogs we talk about workout schedules it's the whole point of team kitty is just like a place to it's a family it's a sisterhood for like i hate that sounds so like hippy dippy right but like it is a place that i feel at home and I hope that all of the, the ladies on Team Kitty feel at home. And I don't know if there is some degree of um, the fact that we are only women, that it's sort of like a safe spot to like vent about the trials and tribulations of being a female streamer. I don't know if that's a part of it and that makes people feel closer because we can kind of identify with that. Um, but I also think that putting the social stuff into this place that would be work you know, it is great. I, I think it's something that, like you said, it feels like a sleepover. It's at the end of the day, at the end of your stream, you can jump into Discord and like vent about how you're disappointed about something that went on, or you can talk about, you know, workout plans or whatever, whatever it is, like this is a place to hang out. Um, and we do that through a couple of different things. Uh, one of the things, actually, being on this podcast reminds me we need to do another one, is a little while ago, uh, Kristen and I happened to be in the same city at the same time. So an interesting thing about our workflow is that she's on the West Coast um, in Canada and I'm on the East Coast of the United States. That's a little bit interesting to kind of sync up on stuff. But um, we happened to both be uh, in New York City and we were like, what if we did something rad? What if we did like a video call with people on the team and we just like caught up with each other. And a lot of it was to do with some business stuff, right? With some reforming of how we were working on the team, uh, with how sponsorships might work on the team. Cause we did have a different model that um, I felt wasn't serving our broadcasters very well. And so we switched things over and I'm happy to talk about that if you would like me to at a different point. But what we found was we just sat down in front of this like video call with each other. And I, <laughs> I don't remember if you were on the call, but, oh, I was. Oh, I was there. I'm sitting there, like, <laughs> trying to be, like, all business. Like, okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm just trying to update people as fast as possible. And yeah. Kristen's, like, and Kristen was going crazy. Bed, like, <laughs> memes and, like, braiding my hair. And, like, it's just <laughs> truly, like, there was a levity in that time where even though we were trying to get stuff done, it was just, like, let's chill out. Like, let's let's be funny. Let's talk about all this stuff. Um, So one of the things is that we're not just necessarily about streaming and this may not apply to other twitch teams where maybe it's like an esports twitch team where your job is the game and your job is the stream maybe that's not the place for this but i think because we try to focus on connecting outside of streaming we're not i, I think everybody that comes to team kitty is invested in being a part of that community it's not just like I want to promote my stream or I want to grow we've however we've done it developed a reputation for like this is that kind of family oriented not family friendly necessarily but family oriented <laughs> um social group and I, like I wish that I could explain exactly what that magic is but it's by for on my end as far as things that I try to put in place or we try to talk about in in uh Discord is inspired by, and I know we've talked about this before, um, a program that I work with called Stratajoy, um, where I'm in a, it's a, it's like a sorority. That's a great point uh, to someone in chat. That's Kelly. Yes, Team Kitty. Um, yes. But it was inspired a lot by a, a similar kind of women's community online called Stratajoy, um, where there are there are some ground rules for all like strategy gatherings and i'm i'm happy to you know shout strategy out it's wonderful i love it um there are are ground rules and it's like this is a space where we can hold space for each other where we can listen to each other there's no judgment there's no gossip there's no back talk that is a hard and fast rule uh it is absolutely not welcome in team kitty communities um 
And it's just, you put in these almost uh, rituals that you create and maintain. So one of the rituals that I love and I straight up stole from Stratajoy is called Stop Drop Selfie. Um, we have a channel in our Discord that is Stop Drop Selfie. And whenever you feel in yourself and you wanna post a selfie, you post it in there and you tag people. And when that person sees it, they must respond with a selfie. It's like, don't care if you're, and like, I, this is literally a strategy rule too. Don't care if you're on the toilet. Don't care if you're in <laughs> bed. Stop, drop, selfie. Those are the rules. Um, and it sounds so silly, but it's just this little moment of levity in your day that it's like, oh, like these are my friends. I'm hanging out with them. And it can make what is normally an online community, which can sometimes feel really distant, right? You're all hiding behind your usernames. You're all in different physical geographic locations. It can make it feel just a little bit more connected. And that may not apply to a particular stream team, right? If, you're, if you've got different goals, then this it's not gonna work for you or it's gonna feel fake or forced. But our our thing is that we we welcome each other we we hang out with each other we spend our time together um and the other the fun one uh that i like that we do is uh love bombs which is like mm -hmm. let's say it's somebody's birthday or a special stream or i don't know like a podcast of some sort um oh. <laughs> we have this channel called love bombs where a stream that needs special attention uh goes in that channel and whoever's working or streaming or hanging out or doing whatever they see that love bombs channel and they go this is where i want to host this is where i want to raid this is where i want to hang out um and so that's a that's a thing that we that we put into place and it's that one is pulled from kristen the way that kristen ends her stream kitty plays is um she instead of raiding a caster going kitty plays right and kitty she does, I love you. And so mm -hmm. everyone is required to type in the next person's chat, I love you, and spam like positivity and love and all that good stuff. So we kind of took that into Team Kitty and we're like, okay, this is the love bomb for today. Hey, it's such and such person's birthday. We're all gonna, when you're done your stream, you're gonna go raid this person if you want. You don't have to, no rules. But if you want to, you can go spam this person with love. And if you, you know, whatever the, the thing is, you can put that forward and say, you know, you can request it for yourself and say, it's my birthday stream. It's, you know, my podcast, it's whatever, something special I want people to pay attention to, or someone else can shout you out on the team. Um, it actually, interestingly enough, has cut down on what I see in other teams and other communities, even like meetup group discord communities. Uh, that's like the self promo, like, oh, hi, like I'm going live now. It's, it is more like, oh, hey, like, Go cheer my go cheer my friend on. Go cheer my sister on. Like we're gonna go look at this person and we're gonna send them all of our love for the day. Um, so it's a couple of things. I feel like I tangented about four times during that, but um, that's a thing that we do. I and love it's, it. It's, it's something that I, I'm not really sure what the magic piece is that actually makes everybody do it. I don't. I truly have no idea. I think that might be a that might be a Kristen thing. That might be her particular brand of magic, and I'm just sort of corralling it. But there's very much a um, a system where we already all know how to support each other and how to ask for that support and how to ask for that space. Um, and it's not, it doesn't feel self-serving because we're all doing it for each other. I love that. I love that. So how have you used merch to kind of like deepen the relationship in the community? Oh boy, okay, so <laughs> dang it girl. I'm a little hey. behind on some of the stuff. So um, <laughs> something that we do, so of course, plugs, blah, blah, blah. If you love Team Kitty, you love a DBH store, you can buy Team Kitty merch. Um, but something that we do that I did um, a little bit special for Team Kitty, not that I did, the merch company that we have worked, we had worked with before, had done, um, we requested it, is we got a special edition hoodie that is a Team Kitty hoodie um, and it's embroidered with each broadcaster's name on it. And there is a new class of Team Kitty Ears that joined a couple months ago that I haven't gotten these made for yet because I am a slacker and I'm a terrible person. Um, but it sounds really silly, but Kristen and I have this larger vision where 
someone who's accepted to Team Kitty, of course, they get an email, right? They get a Twitter shout out, they get a thing. Uh, some sort of like big blow it up, make it happy for this person. Um, <laughs> sorry, Kelly, it's just giving, giving, give me my hoodie. <laughs> give me my hoodie, sorry. Um, we have this vision that not only the jacket, but like you'd get your email that's like, hey, welcome to Team Kitty, we love you. We're excited to have you as a part of the team. Um, but that you would literally get like, when I went to college, I remember being blown away that my acceptance letter to the university I went to, like you opened it and it sang, right? Um, that idea, we want to, the goal eventually, and we're still working with um, with our merchandising partners and a couple of other companies that we're talking with on doing this, but like a care package. Like when you show up on the team, you're, you've applied, we've accepted you, you're gonna get like a box in the mail. And it's going to be like a hoodie and a pin and some stickers and just like, you're on the team. Um, and all of that stuff is designed, actually, I'm looking at some of it because we have um, like a like a charm bracelet that's a Team Kitty logo. I wish I was on video now so I could show it to you. Um, we've got all sorts of different things that our goal is to give you that care package um and i've started i've done my bestest that i have been able to do with getting married and starting a new non-twitch job this year uh about getting those out to people <laughs> some of them i'm still missing thanks for the chat spam um but i um our thing is we want to take that special edition merch right we've got this team kitty zip up hoodie it's got the logo on it it's got the team kitty on the front but I take them to an embroidery shop in my hometown and I get everybody's name put on the front and they get their hoodie and it's like, this is special to you. Now, to me, that's one degree more special than buying something off the merch store. Not that, you know, I'm, I'm all for buying things off the merch store, but it literally cements you in as a part of the team, right? Is it's like, when you go to a convention, when you go to TwitchCon, when you go to VidCon, when you go to PAX, you can wear your Team Kitty thing and it has your name on it. It's not just, I'm a fan, it's I am on this team and I am a part of it. Um, now, I, I, for example, actually uh, with Kelly Danielle hanging out in the chat, I do wanna thank her because she was my hoodie mule for TwitchCon. I did mail most of them to her, um, even though she had joined the team so recently that I didn't have a hoodie for her yet. Uh, cause she's the best, so shouts to Kelly. But, um, I think something that we try to do and are continuing to try to do is something we're expanding on, uh, this, this year is really making that care package special. Of course, we're going to have merch that people should buy, but if you're on the team, we shouldn't have to make you spend your own money to promote something that you love. And so that's kind of the goal for us is that with when it comes to the team merch and merch for members of the team, not merch for the fans of the team, um, that there's no reason that we should make you buy something to promote something that you love. Um, it sounds very silly. It sounds very like tedious and random, but like, why should I make you spend money to rep something that you love? Come on, like, let's just have it. Just be on the team, have the study. And so that's something that um, it's right now, it's little, we're looking at making it bigger, but it's it's something that I think doesn't necessarily bring members of the team together, but makes that member of the team feel very legitimate and feel very, you know, welcomed and a part of the team. And also on a, you know, selfish marketing business end for the team makes, them more likely to say, yeah, I'm on Team Kitty. This is, you know, my name, my Twitch handle is Eskessian and I'm a Team Kitty broadcaster. And of course that increases brand awareness for Team Kitty. And as a manager who is not only trying to unify a community, but is trying to create financial support for our broadcasters. Yeah, like that's, that's going to be a part of it. Um, and anything that we can make people do to say, like, I love being on this team, this is my family, this is my sisterhood, is like, that's very important to me. Um, and part of the reason that I'm so terrible at sending them out is because at the current moment, I'm doing them on my own dime uh, <laughs> because I want to make sure that everybody on the team has 
the ability to create, you know, this this buzz, this hype about being on the team. Because if they love it so much, they wanted to apply and be a part of our communities, then they should be rewarded and celebrated for putting the effort into being a part of that community. I love that. And I think merchandise makes it more real for them too, right? Like totally. you're in you're in this community, you're in this Discord and you're talking to all these women, but once you get a piece of merchandise that you can wear around that not only are people going to like recognize if you're somewhere where people actually know like what Twitch and Team Kitty is and everything, of course, but it's it's something that is like an actual representation of the world that you spend so much time on whenever you are spending your time in an online community. And so you have this like this weird moment of like, wow, what I'm doing is actually, you know, it's real, like it's here, it's in front of me. And so I think that's such a it's such a cool way to really get people to like connect with the community even more because it's actually in their life and they can see it have an impact in their life. Oh, absolutely. And I think the other thing is, is part of, there's no, there shouldn't be at any point with, with Team Kitty, the idea that like, I am the manager or Kristen is, you know, Kitty Plays is Kitty and we're just a part of it. So part of the reason that I go out and I get that hoodie and I get it embroidered with the broadcaster's name on it is it's like, I want you to look at the Team Kitty logo and then see your name next to it. You know, as a member of the team, you are a part of this and we are a part of you. And so that's really key for me, um, specifically on the broadcaster side, the members of the team to say, you know, welcome to the team. I'm really glad you've been a fan of other pastors that are on the team for a long time, but you are a part of this family now. And here is your name right next to our logo and you are here. You have arrived and you are in our family. And that's just really important uh, to me as we worked on our merch line as a team. Of course, merch benefits the team financially, right? It lets us, you know, continue to run our website, continue things to our broadcasters hoping to do a lot more in the coming year, but I care way more about making the people on the team feel <laughs> feel the, the way that they need to feel as a part of this community. So that's, that's kind of a, a piece of that, I guess. I love that. I love that. Cause you've definitely realized that the like authenticity and like genuine aspect of growing these relationships and everybody just kind of like being actual sisters, being like basically a sorority, and all having time to speak to each other and to to grow their friendships is the biggest part of it. And I think that's Team Kitty's strength is that, yes, like we all have the same hobby. We love gaming and we love streaming on Twitch, but but we're also actually friends. Like, yeah, that's well, the it, biggest part of it. And that, that doesn't happen in most Twitch teams, I think. And I think what's what's really interesting is even when you said, oh, it's like, man, I didn't join a sorority in college because sometimes I felt like friends. Like, I yeah. I, I think it's so, um, so different. Actually, I, I, when we talked about kind of the feeling like a big slumber party, one of my favorite things, and I didn't even do this, I had nothing to do with this, is that um, I got married this past October, actually the weekend of TwitchCon, that's why I wasn't there. Um, but a bunch of members of the team put this fun thing together uh, in September where we were like, everyone was pitching it as like, oh, why don't we do like a girls night game night? We'll all like hop record and play games together or whatever it is. And it turns out it was actually my bachelorette party virtual. And so it was like members of the team that were just like, let's do something nice for each other. Let's like hang out, right? Like let's, Let's just mm -hmm. voluntarily spend time with each other socially. Um, and so it, it's this really fun piece of it is like, it's not, like you said, it's not just about the Twitch streaming. None of us were live. None of us were doing anything to do with our streams. It was just like, I found these group of friends that I want to hang out with and I want to throw a party for my friend who's, you know, something exciting is happening in their life. And I'm excited because I can't even take credit for that. Not me slightest it was a surprise to me um and so and that's something I'm really proud of with the group is that feeling like a part of the group everybody that's on the team is motivated to build into that and they're not just receiving all of this love and like enjoying the shout outs but that they're actually building back into that system of this is what we do for each other as team kitty members and I, I really 
really proud that I had nothing to do with a lot of that because it means people are doing it on their own. Yeah, I love that. It's such a testament to how connected everyone actually is. I feel like Team Kitty grew really quickly, especially back in like last year, definitely. But I think like once you really started to take over, like late 2016, early 2017, I felt like a lot of people were kind of being added in really quickly. So let's talk about like usually whenever a team grows, the intimacy between teammates is lost, right? That happens in so many Discord communities. They'll explode and then all of a sudden, like the person that's actually managing the community doesn't have a a relationship with everyone anymore. It's hard for people to feel like they're actually being seen in the conversation and that they actually matter. So how do you maintain that like sisterly bond between members on the team, even what, even while Team Kitty has been growing at the rate that it has? Sure. Um, so I do think what's interesting is that Team Kitty like exploded and grew super. We went from, God, it was probably 50 people to, I would say the better part of 75-ish, like right as I came back in. And part of that, admittedly, was because we'd had like a year of applications that just were sitting there and hadn't been addressed and so (laughs) it's totally valid to say like we just had this like exponential growth super early into kind of the reform of team kitty because we had an idea of what we were going to design for this team and what the vision for the team was and it was like let's find all these people who applied six months ago and nobody was at the email account to to really blow up and say like let's bring them in um one of the things when we go through applications on Team Kitty is that I, uh, Chris and I usually go through it. Heather's done now in her role as community manager to kind of review who comes in uh, and who applies. Uh, and of course we look at channel metrics, blah, blah, boring business stuff. But we also go and we watch their VODs and we say like, is this person, is this someone I want to hang out with? Is this somebody I want to go get coffee with? Right? Like, is this person a good fit for the existing social community? So. That's, I think, one piece of it is that the social community isn't going to dramatically change or change in tone uh, as long as you're building in the same, you know, same vibe of people, right? Right. Um, but the the other thing is, uh, I would say, building in the kind of ritual that I've talked about, too, is, like, we do these things like love bombs or stop drop selfies or, uh, you know, just little things for each other and when someone new joins the team and again since we've kind of been through now over a year of you know kind of we're almost stabilizing as in terms of like acceptance and application waves um so for for those listening applications for team kitty are always open but we go through them and accept people about every six weeks ish um really kind of when we feel that someone is perfect for the team and and we want to come in but we we go through um these kind of these waves of like reading applications saying this is great we want to add people and then moving around but when that person joins the team um we we do a couple of things that kind of ingrain them into the rituals of the team kitty community that makes it sound like a cult and i'm very sorry but um (laughs) We shout them out on Twitter. We, you know, arrange a day where they're going to get a love bomb, which is where anybody who's streaming on Team Kitty that wants to engage in this activity will finish their stream and go raid that person. Um, We have a little kind of like introduce yourself, welcome channel in Discord where it's like, this is me and this is who I am. This is what my channel is about. We make an effort. And I don't even necessarily think this is, I, I wish I could say like, I designed this magical system that we do this whole thing but really it's just you know within the group that exists on the team we understand that this is a responsibility and a part of being on this team is that we're going to support and love on and and you know send hugs to a new person um i think we've created that ritual of when a new person comes we love the crap out of them and we go raid them and we say hi and we shout them out Um, But the other thing is we also, as a group, kind of understand that it doesn't end with that person's first stream on the team, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just, oh, welcome to Team Kitty this week, and then we'll never talk to you again. 
Um, but we also, one of the things that I try to point out to people who are new or new-ish to the team is that you get out what you put in, right? Is it very much like other, as, as I've talked about all the way, not like every streamer network, very much like other streamer network. If you put the time in to be a part of conversation and to be, you know, open about whether it's talking about like the fashion and beauty channel where we talk about lipstick colors or it's tech support or it's, you know, emotional support in terms of things that are going on in our community. If you're open and willing to put things forward into Team Kitty and with the group of us, then you're going to get that back from your teammates. Mm -hmm. And if you just want to join the team and you want to say I'm on Team and you just want to do your own thing, that's great too. Like we we welcome that and we're fine with that too. But I think so much of the, it feels like a slumber party we're braiding each other's hair is like everyone is both giving and receiving of that vibe um, on the team. And I, I, I think it's originally to build it was hard. Um, there were definitely people who would join the team and be like, cool, thanks. And then see you later. Great. Um, but then the, you know, the other piece of it is you get these people who are super jazzed to hang out and be on the team and want to put that energy back into the team. And so it kind of snowballs and runs uh, throughout throughout the group and including of the new, inclu inclusive of the new people, uh, kind of brings that energy along with us. Yeah, absolutely. I know when I joined, I was just absolutely shocked by like, I joined and... I just had this crazy outpouring of love and support that I have never seen anywhere else in the Twitch space. Like getting that interaction from everyone on Twitter and in the Discord and everyone just tagging you and saying like, welcome to the team. We're so excited to have you. Like, yay. And feeling like you actually finally have like cheerleaders was just the craziest feeling for me. I was like, what is this? Where am I? <laughs> and I, think I did so, not know it could be like this. This is awesome. <laughs> it's so different because, I mean, and I, I know that you do work with us too, like any key where it's like that, you know, you and I both know that's not normal for, especially for women on Twitch, mm -hmm. right? Like totally. it's it's not. And so that's something that's really important uh, to to Kristen as well as to me that that we are that space. And, and maybe the whole you know, all day, all stream, you've been getting dumb comments from idiots on the internet, but like when you're done, you wanna come hang out, like, don't worry, we got a soft blanket and a cup of tea for you and we can bitch about how that was shitty and the internet's horrible and we can we can be okay together and then we can build each other up and go back to streaming and, and ignore or let go kind of that negativity and, and have a space for each other that is just like, hell yes. I love this. I actually, it reminds me very much of a, um, like I've said, I, I also um, more receive than work with, but receive a lot of um, a lot of community and love and, and inspiration for some of how we do this from a group that I'm involved with called Stratajoy. Mm -hmm. um, and Stratajoy, I was in a, a program with Stratajoy this year called Elevate, which is a much smaller group work rather than just online resources. And at the end of the Elevate year, um, we have this get together in person. And one of the things to celebrate all of the things that we've worked through as a group um, at the end of the year to celebrate this kind of idea of body love, I'm going on too many tangents, but we do every person that's in the group that wants to, uh, they bring in a photographer and we can do boudoir shoots. And this is 20 women who have only known each other for a year, who are in a house together in a city, just like being excited about that, right? Like I'm gonna, I have explored my own relationship with my body and my figure and whatever, and I'm gonna potentially do this this big scary thing. And when someone first told me, and I'm sorry, this is a long story, but when someone first told me in the Elevate group, like, oh, this is what we're doing in the December meetup, I was like, dear God, no, kill me. Like, this sounds like the worst thing ever and it's in front of other women, even though there are other women that I've like committed to being very loving and non-judgmental, both of myself and of others with, hell no get me out of this and i was like last on the schedule and there was somebody else in our group who was equally hesitant like me but then she just decided like i'm gonna do it it's the only time i said they're gonna happen to me. and i watched as 15 other women who were simultaneously doing each other's hair and makeup were watching this woman do her photo shoot and literally screaming like you look so 
Like it was like the biggest hype squad of like imagine for like dudes listening you may not get this but like if you were a woman and you were told you're gonna do like a personal intimate boudoir photo shoot in front of other women most women would be like nope I'm out and it was literally the most exciting energetic like love that I've ever felt. It wasn't even directed at me. It was directed at a totally different person than a room, but it was just like the greatest feeling in the world. And so I took a little, and this was just this December very recently, but like that's kind of the slice of energy and vibe that I'm like trying my hardest to put in the direction of Team Kitty and sp- and of other spaces where women exist on the internet and on Twitch. It's just like, that's the kind of energy we need to to really feel like supported and and loved and great and bring it all together and i'm just like so about that and that's kind of what i want to infuse into the team kitty life and world and all that good stuff i love that that is so sweet ah so you obviously have some really big goals with team kitty and i think like because of the size of those goals just the challenges and the things that you're running into are really unique too. So let's talk about, for example, like you want to get everyone on the team partnered and working with large sponsors, regardless of the size of the actual streamer. So, oh, you even recently secured that, that deal for everyone with Elgato, which is just huge. So how do you and Team Kitty have companies take all of the streamers that are on the team seriously, even if they aren't to the size that most companies would consider working with? Sure. Um, so I can blame a lot of this. Um, it is, it would be so much more difficult for me to say like, I've got this team of streamers. If Kristen were not this driving force and this driving energy behind the team. So I will blame a good chunk of that on her. Um, because it's no secret that brands want to work with big streamers, right? Mm -hmm. Of course you want it. Totally. You, we can be salty about it all we want, but at the end of the day, it's a business decision. I want to put my advertisement where I'm going to have the most reach. So what's really unique about having Kristen at the helm of Team Kitty is that we can sit here and say, like a company can come forward and say, oh my God, Kitty Plays, we wanna work with you. This is gonna be amazing. Like we wanna you know, advertise and we wanna do all this stuff with your panel. And the response 90% of the time is, great, what about my girls? They're coming with me or we're not doing it. And so that's obviously a very different experience, right? You're, the brand is not going to be like, sure, let's take all of this stuff along with it. But being able to say like to a big company that, is, that wants to work with big streamers, hey, a part of my message as Kitty Plays, a part of my channel as Kitty Plays is empowering other women on this platform. I don't know how many companies are going to disagree with that, right? Like you want to do what? You want to support women? So it's, we're in a very different spot than other stream teams might be because we have kind of the pull is the wrong word because of course they're still welcome to say, oh, well, if you're going to have all these other broadcasters, then no, thank you. But to have the kind of marketing angle of if you would like to sponsor my channel or you're interested in sponsoring my channel, part of sponsoring my channel is supporting what I do for empowering women on the platform. Um, so that's a really easy in to a particular, you know, sponsorship, partnership, whatever you want to call it. Um, but the other piece that follows up with that is the fact that we've got Kristen at the helm of Team Kitty, but then we also have all of these women with their own communities, their own metrics, their own followers that great. I'm so excited that you want to advertise in the kitty channel, but here's 30 to 50 other women that are really, really active, that are really going to hype up your product. Um, and the other, the tying into this idea of supporting women and building up streamers who might not be all the way there yet, who might not be partner, who might not be full-time is we can say, okay, we've guaranteed a certain amount of reach being a team kitty ad, you know, company that wants to advertise with Team Kitty. We'll call it that as like a blanket, whether you're giving product or money or whatever to the streamers on Team Kitty. You're guaranteed a certain amount of reach, but for a little more effort, you're going to get reach across 50 other channels. 
and being able to both promote the the reach of a channel like Kristen's, like Kitty Plays, and the breadth of so many other casters that are in the same vein. We know that this channel is going to be advertiser friendly, that they're going to be positive, they're going to be inclusive. You're not going, that one of the selling points that's huge on my end for Team Kitty with companies is I know as the team manager that you're not going to have a personality scandal with somebody on the team. You're not going to have someone who is uh, all of the bad things we've seen through so many YouTubers and Twitchers and whatever it is, you know, so many of these things that are like, oh, they lost their sponsor because they said X, Y, Z. You're not going to find that on Team Kitty because that's not who we accept. That's that's not the vibe that we take in. Um, so the two two pieces of that is that we're able to leverage the size of Kristen's channels to be able to benefit the smaller channels, but we're also able to say, look at this diverse market you're gonna reach by working with Team Kitty, because we are not a team of all people who play one game or all channels of a similar size or all channels in a similar country. We are so many different metrics and demographics that by working with us, you're gonna find people who love what they do, who and, and the, so a piece of when we do sponsorship stuff on cha on the channels with Team Kitty is we don't make anybody do it. So I can bring something forward, like you mentioned, that we are doing a little bit of work with Elgato, which is very exciting, happening this, in progress this week. Um, but when we get an opportunity like that, I don't write an email to 75 women and say, you must post this, you must use this. I say, who wants in? And because we're doing opt in rather than opt out or no option uh is that we only get people who are willing to kind of put the effort in and to hype up and love on and and really be behind a particular brand we're not just saying thanks for sponsoring team kitty now we're going to put a panel on everybody's channel who doesn't give a damn about your product it's we are here is access to 75 different channels you could advertise on or with or people you could work with to talk about your product. You, t I will ask them who wants to do it and then you will, you will pick some, you will pick the people you want to work with or I will pick the people who are super excited and have the channel metrics you want to. So a lot of my day job for lack of a better word is integrating the two sides, right? Is is working between the members of the team who want to work with companies or are interested in a particular brand activation. Um, and then going to the other side with the company and saying, here is both the you know depth of a demographic you can reach and the diversity across different channels and different games that people play. I love that. And it really helps with that, like that common belief that a lot of maybe smaller creators have, which is that they complain because they feel like nobody is helping them, right? They feel like the the barrier to entry is so high and they have such a problem trying to establish themselves or get themselves known or, or get their content out there because they feel like they just, they don't know what they're doing and they don't have that kind of reach. And so they kind of like take that, that burden and put it on Twitch and they put it on the platform instead of finding it for themselves. And it's actually like there are a lot of larger creators that do help growing streamers and do help growing creators to to get their their self out in front of more people and to create these kind of communities for them. It just takes somebody actually being interested in it to be able to actually put in the work and and find those places where they fit. So it's not that that isn't there because obviously Team Kitty is showing it. It definitely is. Like you have somebody who's extremely well established and influential, like Kitty Place, and she's helping out a hundred women. You know that that just need that assistance. So I think that's super awesome. Yeah, and I, I think the other thing that we do is it obviously applies kind of externally to you know working with a company, trying to get someone to sponsor. Because again, there are so many wonderful Twitch broadcasters out there and content creators who are, you know, again, it's that it's the cheese nachos things. I don't have enough cheese yeah. nachos. I don't have enough chips for my cheese. I, I, so many content creators, not just on our team, in the general market that are so good and could benefit from not having to work. Like my, my favorite way of putting it is think about someone who's almost there. 
if we could find a way to not make them stressed about paying rent that they could spend more time doing what they're really, really good at, which is content creation, then that's where we want to get that person. And it might not be directly through the team. It might be supporting them enough within the team internally and externally to put them up into partners so they can monetize further. Whatever the case may be, our, our job, our place is to help as much as we can to get them there. But at the end of the day, like you said, it's not on the platform. It's not on their team. People who are entertaining and good at what they do are going to find that space. It might just be a matter of time or support or or help or good advice. Um, and one of the things that Kristen also does, um, and really my job is just scheduling it, I don't do anything to do this, is um, one-to-one coaching of members on the team. So this is something we, we, are, we piloted over the last uh, month or so, but what we're working with is a, you know, being on Team Kitty, one of the little perks right now is that once a week we've got these sessions open where you jump on uh, actually a Discord vo- a video call uh, with Kristen and her as that helm of the team, as the expert, as you know the person to ask, you get an hour and we sit there and we talk about what is working with your stream, what's not, what do you want to improve, what are your goals, how can we help you reach those goals, um, and then after that session what those goals are is kind of (laughs) on me to help try to maneuver. But um, that's one of my favorite things um, that when we were talking about earlier about like, does the partner still need to be involved? It's like, that's a great, not one off because it's multiple people, but a great simple piece for Kristen to be involved without having to do the nitty gritty of running the team and managing every single interaction that the team might have with a sponsor or a partner. But that is a way that she is able to still keep the umbrella, the overarching vision of the team alive and and support all the people on the team uh, from an internal perspective as well. Right. It's like finding that perfect balance of of the time that she's able to invest, but also what her unique skills are that she can bring to this community that you and her have both grown. So. That's perfect. Do you have any parting advice for streamers who want to create a really awesome engaged stream team like Team Kitty? Um, so I think there's there's two pieces to it, right? Is obviously whether it's a if it's you know, if you're looking at creating a team or probably a partner, but you know, whether it's creating a team or finding a team is like have a clear vision for what you want and what you want to get out of that community. Um like I said, if, if what someone wants to do with the team is a, you know, shout out for shout out, follow for follow, to network support, that's fantastic. Do that, but do that with all of your energy. Don't do that and then try to do something else with it and then shift it and, you know, do a million different things at once. Have a vision for what that community should look like or what you want it to look like and, and fulfill that whether it's through your own means, through getting some help with a team manager, a community manager, and really being clear and consistent on what that vision is and how you're going to serve your community that way. I guess that's my little, like, pretty bow on uh, what we've talked about. I guess that that's, was my, beautiful. That's, my, that's my parting advice. That's the shiny little package. We did it. It's perfect. Libby, where can everyone find you online? Uh, yeah, so on Twitter, I'm at Libby K. Uh, on Twitch, I'm Eskesian. Nobody knows how to spell it, um, but it's A S K E S I E N N E. Eskesian. No one knows how to say it either. So there you go. Um, and of course, I'm always reachable um, on at Team Kitty TV uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, all of that stuff. Um, so if if Eskesian is too difficult, which it probably is for most people, um, at Team Kitty TV is the team handles. And that's a great place to find me as well. That's perfect. Make sure that you guys check out Libby and Team Kitty. As you can tell, they put a lot of love and time and effort into creating an incredible community for women on Twitch. So if you are listening and you're looking for a space to meet a bunch of sisters, maybe you should check out Team Kitty TV. Thank you so much for coming on, Libby. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. Uh, My apologies for and looking like a potato but i cannot i'm so glad to be a part of the podcast and uh i will catch you very soon 
So as you guys heard, unfortunately that stream team is only for women, but there are a ton of stream teams out there that accept everyone. And yeah, definitely do your research first, get to know like what you're what you're getting into before you really decide to join somebody um, and promote all of the people inside of that team as well as hopefully get yourself promoted if not you know the relationship factor guys the relationship factor is just as good even if you jump into a stream team and you're like i just want to make friends i think that is a perfect reason to get into a stream team and no one should feel guilty or feel like they have to put in a ton of work or feel like they have to to promote all the people inside of it if you just want to join in and get friends i think that's a great reason to do it and uh, that's all I have for you guys this week. If this information was helpful for you, um, I do, you know, of course, make YouTube videos as well. So we have three YouTube videos that come out that are just specifically YouTube only content. And then we have the podcast, which is being posted over on YouTube as well. But, but a couple of weeks ago, I think it was like a week and a half ago, I also launched a Patreon. Okay. And here's the thing. I love the YouTube and I love the podcast and I love being able to teach you guys all of these topics and really introduce more um, more of these ideas and all of these things that I've learned since I've been a streamer since 2012. Um, it, they really allow me to teach all of these topics, right? But for some people, like they just they aren't able to fully understand the topics in a way that makes them able to apply these lessons to their own content. So I also offer coaching over on the Patreon and that is specifically to not only help you guys like learn the lessons, but coaching is the way that I guide your mind to figure out how these lessons apply to your content. Like I can tell you all day that a schedule is important, but you might still have the question like, okay, but what does that mean for me? What kind of schedule is going to be best for my life, for the kind of content I'm creating, for the games I'm creating? Like, what should I be streaming? How many days should I take off? You know, you can know that a schedule is important, but not know how to implement it. And it's the same with literally every single one of these topics that I talk about. So I don't want this to take too long, but if you need help and you know, you, you want to dive a little bit deeper on this, or if you just want to see interviews from other successful streamers, if you want to listen to my business podcast, um, all of that is over on the Patreon as well, and that is at patreon.com slash Christ. It's a really awesome community of people that are just joining together and loving each other and supporting each other and helping each other reach their goals as well as the Discord, that that is an awesome place to be too. So I will see you guys in the next episode. I love you, and don't forget, keep pursuing your dream of learning to stream. Bye! Thanks for listening to the Stream Coach Podcast. See you next week.